So some of you might be wondering why I'm saying minimum energy. And the reason why is that you can see here that I've got E plus minus. And I've got a plus minus written into both these cases. And so what this is actually telling us is that there are really two solutions. There are two energies that we've just calculated right here. We have the E plus solution and we have the E minus solution. And so what this says is that there's actually two states that we've just solved for. And really these two states are solutions that represent this psi electronic, which is this linear combination of the 1s orbital or centered on nucleus A and the 1s orbital that's centered on nucleus B. And that we have these two solutions that satisfy the Schrodinger equation. And the Schrodinger equation, of course, is the Hamiltonian applied to, in this case, our electronic wave function, and that's equal to the energy times the electronic wave function. And so what we've just solved for by minimizing both of these constants, this Ca and Cb, with respect to um, the energy, is that we've solved for some energy that then satisfies the Schrodinger equation. But our next step, which is also an interesting question to ask, is, is what are the two solutions that we have for this electronic wave function? Now, why we would like to know the solutions to this electronic wave function is because once we know the wave functions, then we can start to describe where the electrons are situated in space. And so, of course, if we have electrons that live between our two nuclei, like say, for instance, one of these wave functions says that this region in between the two nuclei is where the most probable region that the electrons will exist, then that will correspond to a bonding orbital, because that's the typical way that we we describe bonding as we say the electrons live between. And then if we have um, a solution where the electrons will tend to live away from the center between um, where the two nuclei exist, then that's an anti-bonding orbital. And so we can only know this if we start to actually figure out what this psi electronic is. And so that's why we're going to do this process of figuring out what psi electronic is. This process is actually straightforward because now that we have this solution for the energy, then all we need to do is take that energy and just plug that back into these expressions we had before, where we had this one linear expression and we had the second linear expression that we used to make our secular determinant matrix. And so all we need to do is just take one of those solutions and the other of those solutions, and we just plug it in for the energy into, say, this first equation that we have here. We could have done it ex exactly the same thing for the second one, but for the sake of this example, I'm going to choose the first one. So all I'm going to do is plug E plus and E minus into that linear expression, and what we'll end up with is a way of calculating the constants Ca and Cb, and then from there we'll be able to calculate the electronic wave function solutions. So let's do just that. So here we are. We're on part six of this, where we're going to find basically what we'll call it a psi plus minus, because each one of these, the plus solution corresponds to E plus, and the minus solution corresponds to E minus. So starting with that first linear equation, Ca times HAA minus E plus Cb times HAB minus E times S is equal to zero. Well, I'm going to plug in the E plus solution. So I'm going to have CA times HAA minus HAA plus HAB divided by one plus S. And that's plus CB times HAB from that I'm going to subtract off. Here's E plus again getting substituted in. HAA plus HAB divided by 1 plus S. And that's going to be multiplied by S. And that's still equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply over here the HAA by 1 plus S over 1 plus S. And this HAB by 1 plus s over 1 plus s. And this is just so that I have the common fraction that, that makes it so that I can subtract these two terms. 
And so when I multiply the the HAA by the numerator in that 1 plus S, then I get CA times HAA plus HAAS. And from that I'm going to subtract the second term off, HAA. And because the minus sign distributes, then I get another minus HAB. And that's all over 1 plus S. And I'm going to add CB. Again, I'm going to multiply the HAB by 1 plus S. HAB plus HAB times S minus HAAS plus, or sorry, minus HABS. And all this again is divided by 1 plus S. And this is all still equal to 0. I'm going to start crossing off some terms. Here I've got an HAA and I have a minus HAA, so those terms cancel. Here I've got a plus HABS minus HABS. And so then what I'm going to be left with for my first term, I have CA times HAAS minus HAB, and that's divided by 1 plus S. And here I'm going to have plus CB times HAB minus HAA times S divided by 1 plus S, and that's equal to 0. And so on this second term, what I can do is I can pull out a minus sign. And so I can make this a plus and this a minus. And I'm going to turn this plus out front to be a minus. And what that means then is that this whole term right here is the exact same as that term right there. I have HAAS minus HAB. I have and plus HAAS minus HAB. And so those two terms are exactly the same. And so what happens is that I can now cross off these two terms because I can basically divide both sides by that term. What that leaves me with is CA minus CB is equal to 0, which then means that CA is equal to CB, meaning that the two constants out front of our electronic wave function solution, in this case this is psi plus, well, that's equal to, originally it was CA times 1SA, but now I can write it as, or and it would be plus CB plus 1SB, but now I can write it as CA 1SB. Just because I know now that, at least for this plus solution, CA is equal to CB. That means that our last step here, now that we've gotten rid of one of the constants, essentially we've gotten rid of CB, is that we can now normalize our psi plus, and that's going to give us what CA is. And so normalization is 1 is equal to the integral over all space of, in this case, we'll say psi plus star psi plus times the volume element. If I actually substitute in for these two wave functions, 1 is equal to the integral over all space, and I'm going to have CA times psi 1 SA star plus CA times psi 1s b star. And that's going to be multiplied by ca psi 1s a plus ca psi 1s b. Again, we still have our volume element. Now I can FOIL this out. I'm going to distribute my integral sign to all four parts of this FOILed out expression. And so what I can do also is that I can distribute out the ca. So here I can distribute out a CA from this term, and I can distribute another CA from this term. So what that means is that I'm going to get CA squared sitting up front, and then I'm only going to have just the wave functions inside the square bracket. This is now my first. I'm going to have 1SA times 1SA, or 1SA star times 1SA. So again, here's my integral over all space, 1SA complex conjugate times psi 1SA. To that I'm going to add the second FOILed term, so this is my integral of psi 1s a complex conjugate times psi 1s b. So then I'm going to add my third FOILed term, this is the integral over all space, psi 1s b complex conjugate times psi 1s a. And then finally I have my fourth term, which is my last, integral over all space, psi 1s b complex conjugate times psi 1s b. 
So we're now going to look a little bit more closely at these four terms, where again this first term is from the first two elements, this is from the outside, this one's from the inside, and this last term is from the last. And we can see right away that if we've got the integral of psi star psi, where they're both the same nuclei, and then we assume that the psi 1sA and psi 1sB are normalized, then we know that that integral is going to be equal to 1, and that if I've got psi star 1sB times psi star 1sB, and again they're no normalized, then that should be equal to 1. What we should also see is that we've seen these two middle integrals already, where we've got this mixed term, this integral over all space is psi in this first case 1s a star times 1s b and that's equal to this integral that we labeled as s and the same thing with this third term psi 1s b star times psi 1s a integrated over all space that gives us again this term s or we're just going to just write that integral as s we're not going to evaluate it explicitly because it's not terribly important at this point but it's just so that we have a placeholder that describes it what that means in the end is that I can write 1 is equal to ca squared, again here's my square bracket and I have 1 plus 2s plus 1 because I get, I'm collecting all my terms together. I can take this term inside the square bracket and move it to the other side, I can divide both sides by it and so that leaves me with 1 divided by 2 plus 2s and that's equal to ca squared. And so finally what we get as our ca is we get 1 divided by 2 times 1 plus s square root and that's equal to ca. So what this means for us in the end is that I can now write a full solution for my psi plus which is equal to ca which is the 2 times 1 plus s because I've distributed out the ca term it's 1 over the square root of 2 times 1 plus s and then I have my two wave functions psi 1sA so the 1s orbital centered on nucleus A plus psi 1sb, my 1s orbital centered on my b nuclei. Now if I were to repeat this whole process and I were to sub in e minus into one of those linear different or one of those linear equations that we had solved for before through a minimization of our um, variational parameters then I would solve for psi minus the other molecular orbital and what we would get is 1 over 2 times 1 minus s square root times psi 1sA minus psi 1sB. And so what we finally solve for here is we have the two molecular orbital wave function solutions that satisfy our Schrodinger equation. So here is our Schrodinger equation written again here. And so in this case what these two wave functions represent is I could write either in the one case if I use psi plus then I would get h hat psi plus and that's equal to e plus psi plus and then alternatively I would then be writing also for the other wave function solution the Hamiltonian applied to psi minus is equal to e minus times psi minus.